I am now a sophomore student at the University of University of Santo Tomas. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ayesla and if you're new here, thank you and I hope you subscribe to my channel. I don't upload much but I'll try to. I can't promise because I can't maintain this. I think it's a lot for me and I just do it because it makes me happy and I like sharing stuff with you guys. So today I'm going to share um, tips of being a college student, especially for nursing students. And this was my experience and I think this really helped me a lot to finish first year. Nung time kasi na naisip ko itong gawin, matagal na siguro a month ago ko pa siya simulat pero ngayon lang ako nakapag um, film talaga. Well, there's a pandemic going on and I find it hard to do stuff like this. I found time and here I am now. So, let's get started. So, I have 13 tips for you guys para makatulong sa inyo sana sa inyong college journey. Well, it's not really for freshies lang. I think it could help other college students. So, let's start. Um, First of all, you have to manage your time well. To plan everything. Ang hirap since if you're a college student, you don't really know what's going on sa isang linggo. Parang minsan may araw na hindi mo alam makakatulog ka pala. May araw pala na sobrang mapupuyat ka na tipong may iyak ka na lang kasi sobrang dami mong gagawin. Kasi if you don't plan ahead, nahihirapan ka and ang mangyayari is magka-cram ka or you wouldn't finish everything. Ako kasi, what I do is I plan my notes ahead. I plan when I'll study. Usually, I study two days before a quiz. The notes kasi, kapag nag-lecture yung prof, I usually take notes using my laptop. I think it helps a lot that you take notes. Especially for people like me na nahihirapan ng isang pakinig lang, you're okay. Hindi ako ganong klase sudyante. Hindi ko kaya yun. Kailangan sa akin... Ulit, ulit. When I do my notes, ang nangyayari is, pag na-type ko siya, after nun, ayusin ko yon So, nabasa ko na ulit. And then, pag nasa ko, ipiprint ko, babasahin ko, i-highlight ko. So, isa na ulit. And then, review ulit mismo on the day. So, naka-apat, halos parang apat kasi sinulat ko, um, inayos ko before print. Pagka-print, i-highlight ko yun. Tapos, yung fourth is, naka-highlight na, tapos babasahin ko na lang ulit. I promise it helps, it helps, it helps. I think it's important to set deadlines for yourself. Just like me, when I have um, papers or projects that I have to do, kung deadline ng Thursday, I'm going to set a deadline for me ng Tuesday, gagawin ko siya ng Monday o kaya ng Sunday. May time ako na pagitan between the deadline ko and sa deadline ng prop ko. Kasi kapag hindi ko siya natapos, kunyari antok na antok na talaga ako kahit may deadline ako sa sarili ko, pwede akong matulog, pwede akong magpahinga, and then... I can do it again on the next day or the day before the deadline of my prop. For you to manage your time, you have to have a planner or an organizer. Why? Kasi kung lahat yung nasa isip mo lang, you might forget it. So you really have to note it down. You really have to um, write it or at least lagay mo sa phone mo, sa reminder, sa note sa phone. And you should know your priorities. Kunyari, nahihirapan ka sa subject na to. You have to um, give time for it to study kasi dun sa subjects na medyo mas nadadalan ka um, intindihan. For example, ako, um, I love health assessment. I like microbiology and I find it harder to study microbiology kasi mas maraming terms na hindi ako masyadong familiar. Hindi ka tulad sa health assessment, um, anatomy and sociology na application lang, so medyo kaya ko siya. Sa microbiology, nahihirapan ako. Kaya sa notes ko, um, I give it more time. I give it um, much more attention than health assessment. Nag-aaral ako ng health assessment, pero sa microbiology, mas tinatodo ko yung aral ko and kunyari, in a week, dalawang beses ko siya aralin. Hindi ka tulad ng health assessment. Managing your time well, kailangan din kasi sinasama mo dito yung family mo, yung acads mo, yung social life mo, or kung may love life ka, di ba? 
kailangan balance lahat. Or kung hindi man balance, alam mo yun, you actually give time to everything else. Hindi lang puro akads kasi nakakadrain and nakakapagod and honestly nakakabaliw siya. At least a time for yourself to reflect, a time for you to rest, and yes, hindi ka madadrain, hindi lang puro akads or hindi lang puro gimmick. Manage your time well. If you manage your time well, you're gonna avoid cramming. This is the second one. Cramming, cramming, cramming. This has been my life ever since high school. Nung junior high school ako, I've been cramming all day, all week, all month, all year. And ever since I managed my time well, um, I planned ahead, I organized my week, my day. Hindi na ako masyado nagka-cram. Like before, nagka-cram pa rin ako. Siyempre, tao pa rin tayo and minsan tinatama din ako. Pero, alam mo yun, kasi if you give more time to something, mas maganda yung balik naman sa'yo. Nung junior high school ako, nagka-cram ako palagi. Average lang palagi yung scores ko. Or kung di man average, pasang awa lang. And wala namang masama doon. I have a goal or I want na mataas yung grades ko just to prove to my parents that yung tuition fee na binabayaran nila is worth it. Kasi sobrang mahal ng college, sobrang mahal sa UST. And I think um, giving good grades to them is very important for student nurses like me. Hindi dapat kinakram kapag meron kang return demonstration. So ngayon mo siya sinabi, you have to give a lot of effort to understand and memorize and know the rationality of the you know, yung interview mo. Hindi basta memorize mo lang kasi syempre tinatanong mo ng prof mo bakit yung kailangan and bakit mo siya ginagawa para saan to, anong magandang sa pasyente at anong hindi. And you have to understand all that. Kapag nag-cram ka, pwedeng memorize mo siya this night. Pero tomorrow pwede ka mo mental block. Syempre nakakakaba, nandiyan yung prof mo, nanonood siya, nandiyan yung ka RLE mo or yung group mates mo. So, you really have to give time for it and please don't cram. I promise repetition is key. Pag paulit-ulit mo siyang review, paulit-ulit mo siyang pinasa, paulit-ulit mo siyang um, sinabi or diniscuss sa kakilala mo, it helps. Um, ako, yung friends ko ngayong college, kapag nag-review kami, nagtatanungan kami sa isa't isa. And in that way, nakakapag-retain kami ng knowledge. So, yun dun sa notes ko, apat na beses ko siya inaaral or lima. Nakikipag-discuss pa ako sa friends ko or sa kaklase ko para mas madali ko siyang maintindihan and para mas maritin sa akin. At yung pagod. Kung meron kayong kapiling ng bata sa labas, if you have um, an idea sa USC College of Nursing, you would know na meron kaming cut-off. So, yung cut-off na to, DOS. DOS is um, around 87 or 88 ata. So, yung DOS na yun. Kapag, um, na-reach mo yung DOS, sure, pass ka. Sabi nila. Kung 1.75 ka, this list ka. So, I'm going to talk about to not stress yourself about the cut-off. You have to enjoy, especially kung gusto mo talaga yung course mo. And for those people na napilitan lang or gusto nang magulang or walang choice kundi mag-nursing or walang piling iba, hindi mo kailangan pilitin yung sarili mo na magkaroon ng 1.75 or higher ng grades. Average grades, it's okay. Sabi nga nila, meron ako nakita po sa Facebook na naanin ko yung sobra kung 75 yung pattern. Kaya nga, sabi naman. Pero for some people, kasi it's really um, important to them to have high grades. Um, it's either they really want it, um, they want to prove something, or parang alam mo ba yun, parang meron silang safe feeling kapag mataas yung grades nila. And for me, as someone who studies now, kasi nung high school hindi, as someone who studies now, and a lot, I mean a lot, it's really nice to have good grades. Nakita mo na yung effort na binigay mo parang bumalik. And then, makikita mo yung grades mo. 1.25, 1.5. So, it's really nice. So, ang masabi ko lang, don't let others pressure you that much. Well, kung gusto mo mag-med school, kailangan mong alagaan yung grades mo. Kung meron kang mga ganong wants in life, like me, 
kailangan mo alagaan yung grades mo. Pero that doesn't mean kailangan yung grades mo 97 or 99 or 95. 90 is okay. Kung mababa ka sa isang subject, hindi mo dapat masyadong uh, sinisising sa limo. Lalo na kung alam mong you try. So that's fine. Kung hindi ka talaga interesado sa subject na yun and mababa ka, I suggest for me, kasi may ganun akong subject na ayoko talaga. Parang hindi ko siya gusto kong aralin. Wala akong choice. Tapos mababa ako doon. Ang ginawa ko, Tinasan ko ibang subjects, lalo na yung magusto ko, yung super interesado ako. Kasi ito yung reality, hindi naman lahat ng subjects gusto mo, hindi lahat madali para sa'yo. And so, what you have to do is, hilahin yung jiwa mo pataas, since lahat yan may unit, so lahat yan medyo mabigat. What I do is, I study more to those subjects that I am more confident in, kaya mataas yung subjects na yun, nahihila na yung jiwa ko. Pero maganda rin kasi sana, kung kaya natin, na taasan din yung jiwa, ay, I mean, mataasan din yung grades ng mga subject na nahihirapan tayo. Or, alam mo yan, you have to give more effort. Pwedeng mas effort din sa yung mo kaya, and then medyo mas easy ka din sa kaya mo para balance lahat. It's really on you. Kailangan mo siyang parang i-calculate somehow. Kasi your goal is not to be a dead sister. Your goal is to pass the first year and move to the second year. Ang isa sa mga sobrang ipagmamayabang ko is sa College of Nursing, sobrang bait ng professors. Sobrang understanding, sobrang compassionate as in. All you have to do is respect them, of course, and you have to ask nicely and be polite. Minsan, kahit ito lang yung tinatanong ko, meron pa silang isi-share. So, mas maintindihan mo. So, that's a good thing. And I love my college. I love you, Mr. Project. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to clarify things. Kahit sa mga kaklas mo. Promise, there are people who are willing to help you. Very, very important, you have to have rest. You have to sleep. You have to take naps. You have to take a break. Kapag nag-review ako, Hindi ko kaya yung one hour review, ten minutes break. Hindi. Every time that I need a break, I take a break. Huwag kang pupunta ng school, lalo na pag may exam ka, nung wala kang um, Other people kasi, they review, then sleep, then wake up early, tapos dire-diretsyo na yung papasok na sila. I usually do is, aral, tulog, and then take the exam. In between my aral sesh, I usually kasi review with my friends. So, kapag break time ko, pag nagdala na ko, or makain ko, something like that, just to take your mind off of what you're reviewing. Kunyara, in a week, you had your finals exam. So, for the whole week, you were busy. For the whole week, you're just reviewing kulang yung tulog mo or hindi ka nang kaya nang maayos. At the end of the week, please, please, please find something that will make you feel happy. It's either you get a 12 on sleep, which I love too, or you visit a friend, or you go back to your family, have dinner, or go to your boyfriend or girlfriend, or spend time with your siblings, your best friend, Read the book. Take a rest. I swear, kailangan na kailangan mo magpahinga. Pahinga could be anything. Could be a 40 minute bath. Go to the salon. You could go watch a movie. You could do a marathon. You could jog. You could go to the gym. Anything that makes you happy. Prioritize yourself. Please don't forget that. Okay? okay. So, this is a tip that I didn't really do to join organizations. I didn't join any org. I mean, I wasn't active in any organization because I was still adjusting even though it was already my third year in USC. It was my first year in college. Very important to somehow be active or be a part of something. And rest mo din yun. And then, you'd have friends, socialize, you can have connections. Parang, alam mo yun, there are certain things that you wouldn't, you wouldn't really expect when you join an organization or if you socialize to a lot of people. So it's important to stay awake when you are reviewing. I have tips to make 
you more awake when you are studying. Um, well, you have to know it for yourself. You have to try a lot of things to know what works for you. Because what works for me might not work for you. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Know what coffee works for you. The one thing that works for me the most is my favorite drink. It's a Starbucks. Every person that I suggested it to actually thank me because it kept them awake. If you try it, please Please, wag mong deterechohin kasi sobrang sasakit ng puso mo. Sobrang magpapalpitin ka as well. As Americano, no water, just ice. Birthday milk, white chocolate. White mocha, syrup, or pump. Okay, 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 okay. Promise it's so good, especially if you love mapaet na coffee. If you don't, this baka matchoke pa sa sobrang paet. Um, another is Macdo's iced coffee. I promise you, it's really that effective. Kung malaki nila, paunti-unti ka lang iinom ng coffee para mag effective siya. Kasi kapag dinaretso mo yan, mag-palpitate ka lang o may pino ka sa mga pag-aaral. Just sit and review, sit, review, sit, review. Tapos pag matutulog ka na, pag malapit ka na matulog, don't drink coffee. Sugar drinks. Not all people are lovers of coffee. It helps you be... Um, hyped up and it can help you be awake. Anything that has sugar. It could be ice cream. But I can eat drink. It's a sugar. It's exercise. I have a friend. She doesn't drink coffee. Mae, if you're watching this, I'm, you know it's you. And then I was so shocked when I heard it because coffee makes me alive. She didn't do it. She didn't coffee. Ang ginagawa niya, nag-exercise siya. Pag naantok siya, nag-exercise siya. That doesn't work for me because when I exercise, I get sleepy. You could use your phone, you could scroll through your social media, or you could watch a series, 20 minutes, mga ganun, just to help you be awake and help you focus again on what works for you. There is to call someone. Klasi mo na rin there, read them. Pwede kang makipag-video chat or pag chat just to keep yourself awake. Um, or kumain ka ng chips, kumain ka ng mane, na green peas, yung mga parang um, mga madaling <laughs> maliliit lang. Anything that you can eat, cake, donuts, anything that makes you happy, just to keep you awake. Next step is to have a spot. What's a spot? A spot is where you study. A good spot, I think, would be never your bed. It could be a desk sa kwarto mo or saan ka nakasira. Kung pwede na malayo sa bed. Kasi parang yung bed, tinatawag ka niyan kapag mag-aaral. So parang, tulad ka na lang, huwag ka na mag-aaral. So ikaw, lalayo ka din sa bed. Another would be coffee shops. Kasi madalas, tahimik naman din. I would suggest coffee bean. Mahal. Lahat. Pero sa coffee bean. You can have free wifi if you have their card. Medyo unti lang yung tao. Compared to Starbucks. Sa Starbucks, mas marami akong gusto ng drink. Pwede sa Tim Hortons. Pero wala pa silang saktakan. So, hirap na makito. Sa coffee bean meron, Starbucks meron. Sa ito yung coffee shop, honestly. Kahit anong cafe, ayaw mo nang maingay, pwede ka mag earphones. Kung ayaw mo nang tugtog, then I suggest you study at home or you study at study hub. Kasi lahat ng tao doon nag-aaral. Lahat na himig. And then, wala na kingay. Or, you could go to a friend's house. Because that helps too. Kasi may katama ko ng group. Find your comfort food. My comfort food is coffee. Pag nag-aaral ako, kala ko may coffee. Or, I love Starbucks. Flat bread. Yung four cheese. Sobrang favorite ko yun. Ang si tinitigan mo lang sa paglatang kang pera. Doon din pa siya kamahal. Kung nag-aaral man kayo or before an exam, you had a bad day, find your comfort food. If you had a great day, you could also eat your comfort food. It could be sandwiches. It could be donut, pizza, anything. Anything that makes your mouth happy. The next tip that I would have to give is you have to surround yourself with good people. 
those people that will help you, those people that won't let you be alone, lalo na pag alam nila mas kailangan mo na kasama. People who will support you, people who don't get insecure. Kasi these people will really help you to be a better version of yourself. Every day, you're learning. You're parang binubuo mo yung personality mo, yung attitude mo, and your morals. So these people will help you be a better Basta yung mga taong susuportahan ka and pamahalin ka kahit anong mangyari, you have to surround yourself with that. And I know it's hard to just pick a friend and eh, dapat friends tayo sa iba. Minsan kasi parang kailangan may certain parang connection. You have to get out there and meet other people. You're building your career and somehow other people are just so insecure about you. And you have to be careful. Next is to enjoy. College is really nice. I think you have to enjoy every step of the way because if you don't, it feels like you're missing something. Don't stress yourself about things that aren't there yet. One of the many things that I have learned in college and my boyfriend mentioned it to me, he said na kapag na pino problema may isang bagay na wala pa naman or Hindi pa dumadating. You're just overstressing yourself. And ang tendency, pwede kang maging anxious, pwede kang hindi maging focus sa kung ano ginagawa mo. This could be like if you have an exam two weeks from now. You're gonna stress about it now. To be like, hala, feeling ko, hindi ko kaya. Hala, baka bumagsak ako. Hala, baka mababa ako kahit anong araw. Don't do that to yourself. Kasi lalo ka lang Parang yun, lalo ka lang mga problema and feeling mo ang dami mong gagawin. Parang ang matitirang memory sa'yo is puro lang ako pagod-pagod-pagod. Pura na ako tulog and you're just gonna be sad. Um, you have to finish it one by one. Kung sa Friday pa yung quiz mo and Monday pa lang ngayon, don't stress about what's going to happen. Try it. Pero you have to prioritize what's going to happen to you. You have to prepare also. You don't just um, throw away what's gonna happen on Friday. You have to keep that in mind. You have to notice that you have a quiz on Friday. Pero you have to pay more attention to what's going to happen tomorrow. Kapag nangas ako ng Tuesday, magiging bad sleep ka ng Wednesday. Tapos kung nandiyan ng Friday, so sobrang kaba mo. Pwede mo mental block ka or yun lang yung ma-achieve mo. But if mangyari man, nagkaroon na anxiety or you overstress yourself, and you're overwhelmed, you ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to talk about it. Don't let it all be traveling. You have to do it one at a time. You have to enjoy it somehow. Please have fun. Please enjoy yourself while we're studying. Because a lot of my friends that have graduated already, or my parents, my titas, my titos, told me that it's really nice that you're still a student and you can do everything you want. And kapag nag-work ka, mas marami problema, marami responsibilities. So, I think, yes, you have to enjoy everything now because we all live once. And this is it. You have to live your own. Another thing is, um, don't be afraid to laugh or have fun kahit yung exam mo one hour na lang bago yung exam. Parang mag ka for at least 10 minutes before the exam. Kasi if you review until that 30 seconds before the exam, parang lahat, parang sobrang makaka, alam yun, makaka-stress. But if, if it works for you, then... So the 13th um, tip would be trust yourself. You wouldn't achieve anything if you don't trust yourself. Don't be too hard sa mga ginagawa mo sa life. You could pressure yourself somehow, but not to the point that you're going to be burned out. Because that's not good for you, that's not good for your physical health, your mental health. There would be days that are very unlikable. Parang it's so bad, you just don't want to talk to anyone. And that's okay. You can just sleep or you can do stuff on your own, you can do personal stuff. Okay lang yun. You don't owe it to anyone na kailangan everyday na kipag-usap ka. It's okay to be silent sometimes. It's okay to be alone. 
and to be on your own. Some people, um, yung approach nila sa mga taong upset sa grades nila is, grades lang yan. It's okay to be upset kung mababa yung grades mo. Especially, especially if you made an effort to have a high grade and then ganun lang yung grade mo. Parang hindi mo deserve. Parang ganun lang yung feeling. You don't really have to explain it to other people na kaya ako upset kasi ganito ganyan. No. You don't owe anyone an explanation for being upset about something. It's your feeling. Okay lang na kung 90 lang na kung mo, you're very upset about it because you think you deserve 90. Okay lang kasi pinaghirapan mo yun and no one can ever tell you that it was good enough. You can tell yourself it was good enough. You communicate with yourself. You can just reflect. And in that way, you could understand your feelings and then you can know what you can do to improve yourself or be better. Pwede kang bumawi. Pwede, pwede kang bumawi. There's always a second chance or a third or a fourth. You just have to forgive yourself. Mangon ka and be better. You have to really have that connection with yourself. Value yourself. You have to trust yourself. You have to love yourself. So, wala ni bang tutulong sa yung kung 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 may mga tao kasi na hindi nila gusto yung course nila so it's really hard for them to say that the pagin sa loob nila and what we can do as their friends is to support them and guide them and help them pero syempre your priority is yourself and you have to be sensitive enough to be there for other people as well so that's it for today we're done I hope you enjoyed this content I hope you learned a lot and it can help you study better Sobrang na-enjoy kong mag-share ng mga tips na to because it really helped me as a student to have good grades and makapasa ng second year, ng first year, at makatuntong ng second year sa USP College of Medicine. So, sa ESA speaking, I'm reminding you to do everything with love and for love.